dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Macy Marie. On Memorial Day, the nation pauses to remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the nation. Nicole Killian is at Arlington National Cemetery with a look at the tributes around the country. From Michigan to Minnesota to Indiana and New York. Observances were held across the nation this Memorial Day to honor the men and women in uniform who gave their lives. We are the beneficiary of their sacrifices and we celebrate the gift that, hey, that they bestowed upon us. Here at Arlington National Cemetery, President Trump placed flags on military graves last week before heading to Japan. Freeze! That left Vice President Mike Pence oh. to preside over Monday's Arlington ceremonies. This Memorial Day, let every American renew our commitment to do our duty, to never fail, never fail to remember what they've done for us. Veterans laid wreaths at the World War II Memorial in Washington and soldiers filed by the names of their fallen brothers and sisters in arms at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Advance the colors. All a reminder of their sacrifice and recognition from a grateful nation. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Arlington National Cemetery. One soldier showed remarkable persistence last week preparing for Memorial Day weekend at Arlington National Cemetery. The 3rd U.S. Infantry Re Regiment were placing flags at the graves of fallen soldiers when a strong storm passed through. During the downpour, some soldiers had to be ordered to stand down from planting flags. But this man approached the tomb of the unknown soldier with U.S. flags in hand, unfazed by the elements. Well, hope everyone has gotten outside today because it's been a beautiful day here in the mountains. You'll notice as we take a look at a few of those cameras, a few clouds here and there, but overall it's been a pretty good day. We're looking at the National Weather Service camera in Jackson. We've seen sunshine throughout the day and hopefully those higher clouds have maybe kept you just a little bit cooler. Looking over into the Mountain Parkway, over into Slade, seeing much of the same story. A little bit of cloud cover over there as well. Satellite and radar shows a few pop-ups here and there throughout the day, but overall most of us have been dry and as we scan this skies. Now you'll notice drier conditions really across all of eastern Kentucky and even looking back into parts of central and even parts of western Kentucky. Those temperatures haven't been too bad today. Actually, these parts into the Big Sandy have been to the upper 70s to lower 80s. So big thank you to the rain that moved through yesterday, keeping them a little bit cooler, but a little bit warmer down to the Cumberland Valley into the mid 80s. But it's really that humidity. Check it out. Those mid to upper 60s to even 70s in some spots, making it feel pretty muggy and uncomfortable out there and may see that continues as we head into the next few days. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. All right, thank you, Paige. At least two people are dead and multiple people injured after a possible tornado ripped through El Reno, Oklahoma. A mobile home park, a hotel, and a car dealership were severely damaged. Rescue crews have been going door to door looking for more victims. Several people were taken to hospitals in the surrounding areas. No word on the extent of their injuries. This year's measles outbreak is reaching levels not seen in 25 years. The CDC is reporting 940 confirmed cases of measles in the U.S. so far this year. That's 60 more reported cases than last week. Officials say we are very close to surpassing 1994's outbreak. Back then, the country was hit with 963 confirmed cases of measles. As it stands now, 26 states have confirmed cases. New York is seeing the worst. It has more new cases reported weekly than any other state. President Trump is close to wrapping up a four-day visit to Japan, which both sides have praised, saying the two countries have an unshakable bond. But as Natalie Brand reports from the White House, the president does not agree with Japan's prime minister when it comes to some of North Korea's missile tests. President Trump says he's not concerned with recent North Korea short-range missile tests. There have been no nuclear tests. There have been no ballistic missiles going out. There have been no long-range missiles going out. And I think that someday 
we'll have a deal. In North Korea's short-range missiles are well within reach of Japan, where the president is taking part in a four-day state visit. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe called the tests regrettable, and the president's own national security advisor, John Bolton, says they violate UN sanctions. My people think it could have been a violation, as you know. I view it differently. I view it as a man. Perhaps he wants to get attention. And perhaps not. Who knows? On the topic of Joe Biden, President Trump sided with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, who echoed the president's own words in calling the former vice president a low IQ individual. Well, Kim Jong-un made a statement that Joe Biden is a low IQ individual. He probably is, based on his record. Uh, I think I agree with him on that. Overall, President Trump and Prime Minister Abe say the trip has been productive. The president says the two countries could have a new trade agreement by August. Our goal is to reduce our trade deficit with Japan, remove trade barriers and barriers of all kinds. And Prime Minister Abe says he's willing to act as a mediator between the U.S. and Iran, something the president says he's open to. Earlier, the president became the first world leader to meet with Japan's newly installed emperor, Naruhito. And he took in a sumo wrestling match over the weekend. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. President Trump will visit the naval base tonight to visit sailors before heading back home. Another racehorse was euthanized after it was injured at Santa Anita Park in California. The park says the horse injured a leg during his sixth race on Saturday and was euthanized Sunday. He's the 26th horse to be euthanized at the park just since December. It's an unusually high number of horse deaths for a race season at the park. It's inspired controversy and critic, a criticism from advocates for animals, and it sparked a reexamination of the sport in the state. Nearly 50 years after Neil Armstrong made a giant leap for mankind, scientists continue studying the moon. NASA is approaching another milestone, the 10th anniversary of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Our Washington Bureau's Ted Forizolo tells us about its discoveries. I think the moon is intriguing to people because, you know, anyone can go out on a clear night and see, just with your naked eye, bright areas and dark areas. But thanks to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, we can see a lot more than that. We have two high-resolution cameras. There's I met LRO project staff, scientist Noah Petro uh, at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, where a full-scale model of the orbiter is on display. It's also home to LRO's Mission Operations Center. The orbiter's original purpose was to map the moon's surface to determine where astronauts and robots could safely land. It was supposed to last one year. Now, a decade later, LRO has collected one petabyte of data, the largest of any NASA mission. The most impressive discovery now is the identification of surface changes. With every year or two or three years that we're at the moon, we're able to, to really classify the moon, identify the changes at the moon in ways that are unprecedented in planetary science. Ahead of the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter team embarked on a new project using the LRO to retrace the footsteps of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. If you take their footprints and you put it into the context of something we're comfortable with, you know, they didn't leave the infield of a baseball diamond. This is what that first moonwalk looked like from above. Armstrong represented by the yellow dot. Aldrin is the green one. And I want to know if you can see an angular rock uh, in the foreground. Now we can take what they were saying on the surface and look at from orbit. Oh, okay, when, when Neil Armstrong is describing that boulder field, we can see the crater that causes those boulders on the surface. And so really bringing, again, into the 21st century, the observations from 1969. In Maryland, I'm Tit Furaliso. NASA hopes to keep the lunar orbiter going for at least three more years. It has enough fuel for seven. And still to come on Mountain News at 5.30, would you rent from a store? We'll take a look at the growing trend in the apparel business. And those warmer temperatures continue along with a few stray rain chances. Also looks like those temperatures could be a little bit cooler by the end of the work week. I'll look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes.